encanto de la mente humana. En esto de la tecnología y su avance exponencial, a mí me gusta pensar que el arte es uno de los pocos refugios de lo humano frente a la inteligencia artificial, porque una cosa es copiar, pero otra es crear. Cuando se crea, se sucumbe a la pasión, al sentimiento, a lo irracional, al impulso. Pero ¿será que hasta eso tiene también una traducción, una modelación en un algoritmo? ¿Será que eso puede ser también creado por una máquina? Está por verse, pero espero que el arte sea una de nuestras últimas huellas dactilares de lo que es ser humano. Soy Amaro Gómez Pablos y esto es Al Límite de la Ficción. Who's the artist here? Uh, we like to say we are the artists uh, because uh, we're just like same type of artist as everyone but working with a different tool uh, but the tool that we work with uh, it has a, a creative part or at least an inventive part so we could be tempted to say that both the the tool we use and us are the, the artists so the name of the fourth artist if you if you should have to say <laughs> but more of a tool for us is generative adversarial networks and so um, the this algorithm uses many examples uh, of photos to create a new, uh, an, an entirely new picture. And then tries to learn to create a new, original, unique uh, one. So uh, it's not a, a, a mix of all the pictures that we show, to, we show it. Uh, it's really like a, a, the result of a learning process and it creates a, a, new, a new visual. So for example, we've used it for creating portraits. So we fed it uh, 15,000 portraits and uh, we are able to create a new portrait. And we, we decided not to actually give it a, a proper name because it might be misleading. Uh, when someone has a name, uh, you, you think it's a, a person. But this is uh, just a very powerful set of formulas uh, and lines of code. So we don't consider it a, a proper person, you know. So yeah. it's uh, three artists and their two. I find it fascinating. Now, is there an element of suspense in this creative process? Are you sometimes in this dramatic stance in which you don't know what you're going to be seeing uh, with the algorithm that you have created? A very interesting part of what, uh, what we do, that's what we, we enjoy the most, I, I think. Yes. And uh, also, you, you have to think of it like the algorithm, it's not either it works or it doesn't work because we are dealing with art, so sometimes it doesn't work, but the results are even more impressive than if it worked too well and it would just look like a regular painting. painting. And we kind of like this aspect of uh, a blurry result, like uh, you can see, like mistakes. the yeah, mistakes. exactly, like the mistakes being done by the algorithm. It's actually what creates the original. Algorithm makes mistakes. Yeah. El algoritmo comete errores. For sure. So you can see right there. For example, the algorithm tried to create um, uh, to create the Japanese landscape, and here it tried to do a mountain. But clearly, that's not a mountain, but it kind of like it kind of looks like a mountain, and we do think that's uh, that's aesthetically very pleasing. And so that one of the type of surprises that you can have with this algorithm and uh, that's what we brilliant about it. Yeah! <clears throat> Sorry. Art sometimes is euphoria or it comes out of depression. I'm thinking of Vincent van Gogh, I'm thinking of uh, Toulouse-Lautrec, mental illness, something that escapes logic. Where is that in your artwork? For this type of art, the emotion actually, it doesn't really come from the artist, but it comes directly from the viewer and from its, interpret in its interpretation of the art.
Andrew, ¿dónde estamos? Where are we? So right now we are in the main gallery of Art Tech House New York City. What you're seeing around you is our newest installation, Submerge. Uh, Submerge was created by the Art Tech House team and inspired by Pantone's color of the year, Classic Blue. Cuéntame un poco de qué nace y el espíritu detrás de arte. The idea for Art Tech House really comes from a place of wanting to create a home for unique 21st century digital art, to create a place where these types of artists can present their work and a place where visitors can come and be a part of that um, and experience it. Who are these artists? Uh, just so that we can follow some of them. Yeah, our last installation, the inaugural installation here at Art Tech House in New York City, was called Machine Hallucination uh, by an artist named Rafik Anadol. Um, that was a really, really unique installation that was specifically designed for this space here in New York. That installation, what Rafik did is they took over a hundred million publicly accessible images of New York City, and then he worked with a um, AI algorithm, fed those images through the algorithm, and then the AI algorithm created essentially what a new version of a city based on analyzing all of these hundreds of thousands of images. So the installation that you saw was the process of that machine learning presented for you. It was really unbelievable. Wow, it is amazing. Me siento como si estuviera en otra dimensión completamente distinta. And I congratulate you. Me encanta that you can experience this in this fashion, as you wish, como uno quiera. You know, it's amazing. I love it. Tell me about that moment in which you were auctioning your painting at Christie's. So it was something uh, people were interested in too. And so there were lots and lots of media coverage you, on this. You were which, expecting you were expecting what numbers and you got what? So at first I would say, so when Christie's got, uh, came to us, uh, the estimate was uh, 8,000 to 10,000 US dollars. And so we were, uh, we were really stressed about not selling. Yeah. Like uh, having this <laughs> adoption, <laughs> nobody cares, and, uh, and it's just uh, gone. Yeah, gone. Yeah. <laughs> se fue. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, when the media coverage got bigger and bigger, we knew that he was going to sell because uh, lots of people were talking about this, and it was kind of uh, looking like this uh, will be some kind of history moment because uh, more and more as people talked talked about this, it became kind of like a, an historic sale. And what was the final number? Y el número final fue? 432,000. Sold! <laughs> <Bomb>. <laughs> Eso, pero uno se imagina una especie de robot con una con un pincel. Yeah, but actually it's just a computer, a regular computer. Uh, this type of tools you can use it with uh, any type of computer that have enough computing power, which is not that expensive at the moment. And uh, most of the algorithm that uh, we use, that anybody use, is uh, given by research. So it's open source and uh, anyone can use it. And so uh, that's a very uh, accessible technology in the end. So yeah. This so this whole work. process, it takes uh, roughly six months. Yeah. Six months. To make a, a collection. It's not one unique artwork. It's, it create, we create like a whole collection uh, in six months. Yeah. From, from scratch, it takes it. Your next collection, su próxima colección? Yeah, uh, this is going to be about uh, cave art. So we're working uh, today with Lasco, and it's we think it's like a very impactful um, uh, message to uh, to work on primitive art with the latest technology. So we hope uh, we hope uh, to produce some very interesting artwork. Quiero ver este trabajo porque estamos hablando de hace 14 o 40 mil años atrás mm -hmm. hasta esta última manifestación artística. Yeah, exactly. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks Fantastico, man. eh? Thank Qué you. bueno. Excellent. Good one. Thank you.